Hello. Um, my name is Federica, uh, and I'm uh, a year um, our studio learner. So within the past year, I've spent lots of time uh, learning the grammar of uh, different packages. I uh, really enjoy using R, R Studio, and uh, all the, the things that are around this. Um, I'm part of the R for Data Science community, uh, take part in different uh, other uh, book clubs. Uh, as John has said, uh, it's very important from, for, for learning um, uh, in um, like while practicing uh, together, it's very important. So um, thank you very much for, for attending these sessions. Um, I am from Italy. I don't know if you just have uh, <laughs> uh, understood the accent. Uh, I've spent just a little bit more about me. I've spent a few years abroad, uh, so that's why I've learned the language. And uh, now I like to keep practicing with uh, uh, data analysis using uh, my second language. Uh, so today we uh, talk about um, ggplot2 package, data visualization, uh, and so exploratory analysis. I start sharing my screen, I've made a few notes, not still attached by, uh, to, the, to the main ones, but we'll see if to attach it later. I'll share the screen. Right. Okay. So this is um, uh, making graphic um, is uh, the very important part of data science. So it's the fundamental uh, part. And the fundamental principles or rules uh, to making art with science. So um, there's lots of resources to go through to really understand the topic, but the best way is to get practice. So with these few notes today, we learn a bit of data visualization which means learning the basic structure of a ggplot. And then data transformation with some verbs, select, filter, create, and summarize, but I'll, I won't go to them, just a little touch. And then finally, exploratory data analysis, which is a combination of the two, combination of visualization and transformation. So um, this is a companion uh, of the Our Data Science uh, uh, book, uh, um, as you may already know. So I've just followed uh, the second and third chapter of the book to, to make these notes. Um, and um, the, the, this, this chapter is mainly focused on this package, which is ggplot2. Uh, I just uh, go uh, to the feature of this package, which is very important to making a visualization of your data and possibly uh, express to the other uh, the answer of your research question. So ggplot2 is a plotting system, as said by Adley Wickham, the author of the, the book, um, based on grammar of graphics, which tries to take the good part of uh, base and lactic, lattice graphics uh, and not the, the bad part. Because before of ggplot2, uh, within R, and you, you could use the, the base uh, of plotting with the plot function and uh, the, with, and the lattice, uh, lattice with the um, um, package. So ggplot2 is a, um, an upgrade of these two functions and they have um, 
the, the, this package has wrapped the, 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 the base and the lattice um, uh, graphics to, to make this um, new type of visualizations. So it takes care of many of the field the details that make plotting a hassle, like drawing legends, as well as providing a powerful model of graphics that make it easy to produ produce complex multi-layered graphics. So first step, obviously, is to load the package with the function install packages, uh, uh, double quotes, ggplot2, then load the library with the function library, and then uh, start building uh, a plot with some data. Um, first things uh, I have to say that the data need to be ready for plotting the, uh, in a way that you want to the, the, the visualization uh, appear. So this is the, 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 fun, the foundation, the basic structure of a plot. So the first thing is you use the ggplot function with data inside or some, in some other ways that I, I will show you later. And then a geom function with a mapping uh, inside, which takes the coordinates, the x and y uh, that you want to be plotted. Then you can uh, set some other features as well as coordinate function and facet functions. So we start making a blank ggplot this way. We do ggplot function and geom. In this case, I've used geom blank to show you just the, the skeleton of a uh, plot, of a ggplot. And then you add some features as well as data to, to make a nice visualization. So basically, when you, um, after having loaded the library, you can start building your plot. And this uh, ggplot function can be used adding data inside the function as of its first argument, as I've shown above, this way, like ggplot, data, this, some data, then some mapping and some geom functions. Or another way to add data uh, to your ggplot is with the pipe operator. The pipe operator uh, would be uh, available with the deployer package or if you load the tidyverse package, you have ggplot2 and deployer all in one package. So I, just wanna, the, I just want to butt in for a sec that if anyone's not familiar with the pipe, we're going to talk about it a lot more in upcoming things. Um, I think uh, Federica has used uh, the tidyverse a bit, and so some of this might not be familiar to new people who are more new. Um, the one tip I'll give you for the pipe is when you see that weird percent greater than percent, think of it as and then, and everything makes more sense. So... Right. It's Take a, some data um, and then, yep, go ahead. <laughs> right. Um, I've just uh, shown this uh, to, to say that you can attach the data to your ggplot with this, um, with this operator, so without putting them inside. Then the same structure as before. Uh, as, before. You, um, as you have seen, the structure of a, a ggplot um, it uh, must have a geom. As a, um, you see that I have a, a blank um, plot because I, I have used a geom blank. The ggplot2 package and there are fairly many different other package which provide full geoms. You uh, can um, obviously add a different geom to make a plot. And this, the, the basic ones are point, which is uh, make, it's able to make a scatter plot. So you do ggplot and then geom point 
and you will be able to see a scatter plot. Then you have a geom line, geom smooth, a histogram, um, box plot, geom map, or text, uh, so many others. In the structure of a ggplot, you have an aesthetic, uh, aesthetic mapping, which is this part here. You have a, a ggplot function which in, with inside some data and then a mapping with an aesthetic. Um, this, is very, this is a very important part uh, to understand because the mapping part is the part that contains the coordinates. The coordinates uh, are the, the, the fundamental part for you to uh, visualize the, uh, your data. Um, you can use, as, as ggplot2 provides the possibility of making some plot um, function um, link it all together. It's, uh, it's different from the classic plot function where you can add some plots one after the other and you, uh, you make one plot and then add a line. In this contest with ggplot2 you add different geoms so you can add more than one geom. For this reason it's important for you to understand that the mapping part which contains the coordinates can be positioned in the ggplot function or inside a geom. So basically you can use different data sets. They may uh, can be filtered or subsetted on everything. Uh, and you can use a um, um, specified mapping inside a geom function. So to begin with, with this uh, uh, understanding, we use the mapping inside a ggplot function. And this mapping will take care of all the other geoms that follow the ggplot function. Um, the mapping, what is it? The mapping is, is um, the, the coordinate system, but it, it is not only that. So you, you might want to, you need to add the coordinates, so the X and the Y, but then you may want to add some other features. And these other features will uh, let you um, make your visualization nicer. For example, you can uh, add the size, if you do geom point, so a scatter plot, you can add the size, you can add the shape, you ch can change the shape, you can change the color, the fill, so the color is the um, um, border inside your, the, the, the um, chosen shape, and the fill is the color that will fill the inside of your shape. Then the alpha, which is the transparency level, the stroke, which is the, um, uh, the thickness uh, of, the shape, of your shape, the line type, then you can group it, you can show the legend or not, and many others. So there's lots of le to, to, to learn. As to give you an, a quick example, uh, this is a classic data set. Um, which provides information about cars and everything. Um, so you, for now, just take consideration that this is a data set and you are doing a scatter plot, uh, mapping the X and the Y of your data. And in this case, this is the um, a first look of a Mm, visualiz visualization with data. Then you can modify the, plot, the, the dots with different shapes, you can color them, you can color a part, uh, just a part of them. So there are many things that you can do. But it's very, very fundamental to take care of the data part 
So you import the data, you tidy the data, you transform the data purposely for making your visualization. This is very important. If you have data settled right for the type of visualization that you want to give out, you want to see clearly, it, it would be easy. Okay, um, so after the, the first two part, which is the ggplot function and the geom part, which you can have many as your visualization requires, you can add other functions like facet. And this facet, as the, its name said, uh, making um, group of your da data uh, are specified by this um, structure of a part of a function. You can have facet wrap or facet grid, uh, and all of this uh, is specified. You can search of them with uh, just putting a question mark uh, um, on top on front of the function and uh, look for the, the explanation and you find everything. But uh, in general, facet wrap is uh, used with discrete data and facet and, and then you can set up uh, like the number of rows, uh, the number of columns, uh, um, while facet grid is like uh, that you need two variables um, for making um, it within the inside the function, and you usually do not specify the number of rows, but he just set all the facet um, like a columns way in a column. Um, the last function that you add to your uh, ggplot is a chord uh, function which can be called flip, called quick map, called polar, or called fixed. And uh, as you, we have shown at the beginning, the structure of a plot, this is the last part. Uh, and this will take care of the, um, um, like the axis uh, and the structure of the axis. So, for example, uh, that, that we, then after this little introduction, we can see um, examples to, to see what is it. Then the last uh, um, things I want to mention is that you can inside a geom, as I've said, you, have, you can add a mapping and this mapping can also contain new data that you may uh, want to subset from, or, or obtain a subset from the original data, or you can add, literally add different data. So this is, uh, that is. then, uh, so this is, uh, I'm going to uh, just quickly on the top, this is what we have seen. A ggplot function with some data, dgeom function, where inside you can add the mapping and some other features. Then the coordinate function and the facet function. So this is what we have seen uh, in this, um, uh, introduction of the ggplot. Then what happened? Happened that you can make it better. That will give a shape of a very uh, skeleton of your like um, a simple ggplot, which is this. And then you can add some more feature to make it nicer, like colors or, or things. These things can be modified with this function, a team. So the team function, um, what, do, what, what does it do? It, 
base, basically its uh, um, function is to let you customize the non-data components of your plot. And so inside the team function, you have tiles, labels, fonts, backgrounds, grid lines, and everything that you can customize um, as, as you like. For example, if I have a blank ggplot and I want to modify uh, a little part of the team, I can do, for example, for example with using uh, the plot background customization. So I can change uh, the background of my plot, which is the uh, just the frame of my plot. And then I can change the panel background, which is the inside of the plot, uh, with some different colors. So I can use color, red, and establish the size, and then fill, fill it with a different co color. And this is the, this part here. And then the panel background as well with color gray, which is the structure of the, fa the frame here. And then uh, fill it with another color. Um, after a bit of uh, uh, practicing, uh, doing plots and everything, I found that these are very important things to, to know. Uh, I just need um, uh, a minute, I stop sharing, and uh, I'll be back to you in a second. All right. Does anyone have any any questions? Any things they're wondering about so far? While while she has to answer the phone. Anything to talk about? Anything you found interesting in the chapter? <laughs> yeah, I actually have a question. So, what does uh, and this is going to show that I didn't read the chapter, yeah. but I'm following <laughs> along. Um, what does AES stand for? Is it aesthetic? Yes. So is it a layer? So aesthetic. Um, how yeah. did I put it in this? So I've got a definition where it's like all the visual properties that you want to map into your plot. So the idea is, you know, maybe one column is the X coordinate, another column is the Y coordinate, but another column column might be um, what shape do you want to use? Do you want points? Do you want crosses? Do you want uh, pluses uh, or X's and pluses? Things like that. Uh, you might map the color the fill for certain geometries. So it's just, it's all these visual things are the aesthetics. Um, okay, okay. And yeah, and the, then, the reason it's called a mapping, just to tie a bow on that, is that you're uh -huh. mapping from the data to that visual thing. So. Okay, um, right. Yeah. Oh. Okay, so um, I'll go back there and sharing again. Um, to conclude with this, um, uh, with this part, uh, the book uh, provides some some solution, some exercise. I request some, the, if you want to see some exercises, and uh, here is a link, uh, uh, and then I'll put in the chat with the solution of the exercise. Then we can go through them. Um, for example, uh, this is something that uh, one of the the other taking part of the uh, the group the the community um i i, I can't find uh, the the chat hmm. oh, okay there it is so i'll put the link here so if you want to see it and uh, let's see if, if there's any any questions. Otherwise, we go through. Uh, I show you some practice with a, a few plots. Uh, and if you have some questions, look at some practical examples. Yes, there's some practical examples. Uh, and then there's different packages and everything. 
So do you, do you have some questions in particular or uh, we can go forward and see some plots? I think seeing some examples would be great. Yeah, okay. So we see this um, um, example, which are very nice to and answering the the, the question um, in the, uh, the the examples uh, of um, the exercises uh, in the book. So let's see, uh, for example, um, something in practice. Okay, so I think it's better if I share my R. I, I just have a quick background question. So this MPG data set yeah. is, uh, looks like characteristics of different types of cars, right? Is, is that what yes. it is? So just a whole bunch of like different categories of, okay. Yes, the, the, um, the data set uh, is um, pro provided inside the, um, uh, f from the ggplot package. Mm -hmm. And um, you can, um, when you load the package, uh, because you, with library ggplot2, then inside the package, uh, as you can see, uh, if you do, for example, ls uh, and then double quote package ggplot2, mm -hmm. you see all that is inside the package, which are the, the function as well as the, there's many things, as well as the data available for you to use. Um, if we load this data, mm -hmm. uh, for example, um, the, uh, with this uh, with this function, okay, you you can do if you have loaded the the the, the package, you don't need to add this part. Uh, in front of um, the function or the data set that are you recalling from the package. But sometimes uh, some reasons for which uh, it would be easier uh, for you to, without loading the package, just uh, uh, um, recalling the, the data uh, from the package this way, like you do ggplot2 double um, uh, columns, uh, and you can just retrieve the data or a function. So this is the, the data is this one here. Uh, it's a manufacturer, uh, the, it's a car manufacturer data. So you have a, a, a list of manufacturer, uh, the model of the car, uh, the, like the um, uh, power, the, um, the potentiality of the car, uh, the year, the cylinders, uh, the transformation, so the, the, um, some like uh, type of um, uh, um, so other other features provided by um, this uh, data frame and belonging to cars. Okay, uh, then you can. This is a very famous uh, data set that it's provided for you to to have a visualization of the data. So one uh, uh, very simple one. For example, if you do a, this little structure and calling with, um, so you want to show um, the, uh, if, if it's a car, it's um, um, two, uh, 
uh, or 1.8 or 3.1. So the um, different uh, uh, display of of, um, of the car. You can put this, and you want that on the x-axis. Uh, uh, you just uh, call it like this, like uh, x axis uh, equals to the data, uh, the part of the, the variable of the data that you want to recall, and then uh, establish your y axis, which is, should be uh, the variable that which is an independent variable. Uh, so this is the dependent variable, and this is what is the other variable which takes, takes the shapes based on the uh, x uh, axis variable. Um, I'm using R markdown. I don't know if you, are, mm, you, you know this, but in this case, uh, I can just click this uh, arrow here to obtain, uh, to, to ask R to uh, make the function working. Otherwise, you do, as you know, like with command and um, uh, in, uh, <laughs> um, in view. Okay, so let's go and see some, some examples. Um, because the, the exploratory data analysis, it's, it's a very important part. So I've done a bit of uh, exploratory data analysis uh, with uh, many things that are provided um, with um, the other communities uh, as well as uh, Tidy Tuesday, which uh, if you are interested in doing visualization, I suggest you to get inside and uh, do some Tidy Tuesday uh, because it's very important for learning how to make visualizations and so exploratory data analysis. To give you an example and wrap everything around, I'll show you some, um, uh, some things uh, uh, done with um, um, the, the last study Tuesday. Uh, I won't go inside many things that you don't know, because we, we still haven't touched them, but I just go straight forward to the, the plot side for you to see that uh, when you have settled your uh, data, then it would be easier for you to make a plot. So for example, um, I have my data and I have settle my data right, uh, just as well as, uh, as the same as you have uh, the, the card data. And then I can use this operator to link my data to my ggplot. So in this case, I do not have my data inside the ggplot function, but they are inside. Then I establish some aesthetic, which are the, the x and the y uh, part of my ggplot, but inside I had some features. As I said, I can add uh, fill, colors, shapes, sides, and everything. And then uh, I uh, can add some geoms. In this case, I've added uh, a geom bar and for you to understand what is uh, the best things to do, it would be nice to do like a question mark and do like geom and then bar, for example. And then when you do in VO, uh, enter, you see that in the pane, um, so in the help, uh, visualization uh, of your pain, you see that uh, there is an explanation of the function that you have just asked it to, to see. For example, a geom bar makes bar charts as well as geom points 
makes scattered plots. And the bar chart, it's for making like uh, stat counts. Um, so within this help uh, um, window, you can find lots of information, uh, which are the arguments your geom requires and lets you use. For example, there is a mapping that you can use or not, this data that you can add as a new data or not. So using you can use the data in, within the ggplot function. And then you can add the width, orientation, show lead, legend, as well as uh, geom bar, there is geom call uh, and stat count, as well as geom histogram. In this case, I have used uh, geom bar uh, with position stack, and then uh, um, as I have uh, uh, asked it to color. Um, basically um, the inside of my bars with this function fill um, I can add a footer function which is scale fill uh, this can obviously if you use color you can use scale color it's a, a one more function that will be useful for you to establish the set of colors you visualize. Uh, then you can add titles with labs, and you can add titles, titles, uh, change the name of the, the legend, uh, and then establish a team. Diff there are many different themes and uh, uh, um, customization of the team that you have um, that you have uh, so um, sorry I um, won't go um, I just uh, need some time to load the data and then we see what is this uh, what, what, how it looks i think uh i think we're I'm losing you, so, uh give it a second for the internet to catch up i think yes i stopped right. sharing uh, in the meantime it's loading but it has already done okay i believe it's done okay done so we can see uh the plot okay so this is the plot as you uh if i this is um my time. So if I do this, then it's settled uh, and it will be clear to see. Uh, as you see, this is a simple uh, ggplot. Uh, and um, uh, this visualization you see is because uh, I have chosen a part of the team. We're losing you. You're you're breaking up uh, quite a bit, unfortunately, Federica. I love this plot. Um, I don't know if we're gonna make it all the way through, but if you search for hashtag Tidy Tuesday on Twitter, and actually I can just put the link in, Federica's plot comes up pretty high right now because it's very cool, the the rest of this plot. Maybe I should um, close some windows <laughs> or, but anyway, um, just tell me, let, let me know if I... Um, 
you are you're back <laughs> i'm back okay so um, this is the plot uh, and as you can see i have used the geom bar um scale uh, 538 because it's a color and then uh, the team as well and you for example if i do this if i do team and then uh, this way and then tab pardon tab uh, what come, comes out is a list of packages uh, no sorry it's a list of team that you can use to customize your uh, ggplot um, then another one more thing I like to show, which is belong um, belongs to this plot, is this: for doing a geom bar, you don't. Uh, it's not required for you to establish uh, something in the y axis because it does uh, the count, the stats count. So for you, you can use just the something in the x axis. Um, and um, as you can see, the fill, uh, fa um, so the, the, the fill thing is inside the aesthetic. And this is because I'm using, uh, I'm requesting to color it um, following some, the, some variables belonging to my data set. So I'm not establishing a color, blue, red, or something, but I'm requesting the, uh, the ggplot function to grab the colors based on uh, different outcomes of, my, of one of the, my variables in, the, in my data set. If I say, for example, I don't want uh, this uh, to be colored like this, but I want specified colors. Um, I don't need to use a variable here, but uh, I would, for example, uh, put this inside, uh, outside the, for a minute I'll put here, and then uh, close the aesthetic and uh, like uh, um, ask, to fill it uh, uh, just red. Uh, so this bracket belongs to this. this there is one more. Uh, as you have seen, R uh, advised that there is something wrong. So if I run this now without um, the thing, the color hasn't come out. Because this is um, a tool uh, that should be... Um, um, the scale is is fighting against you. <laughs> yes, that's... Yeah. that's, that's sorry. <laughs> yes. Um, yes. Mm, um, because uh, okay, so this is because um, uh, the color of my um, uh, bar. This is one of the exercises, and. Uh, um, I don't know what, uh, because uh, I haven't done a set and everything, so it should work. Okay, so now this is the color, which means the borders of your uh, bars. But if I do fill, it's just filling them uh, completely. And then you can add, for example, color 
and you can say that you want the blue. Okay. And that will uh, color the uh, borders and the inside differently as you have established. Uh, we don't have the differentiation within the sex because this is a variable and the variable belongs to an aesthetic. So if you want to see something, uh, some customization uh, applied uh, to one of your variables, you need to put it inside the aesthetic. Okay, I hope uh, to have uh, um, answered some, given some uh, uh, introduction of the thing and given some uh, visualization. Now I stop sharing and then uh, let's see if you have uh, questions. So there were a couple of questions in the chat. Um, I answered them, but I think it's good to talk about it out loud. Out loud. Uh, what's the difference between the GG title function and the labs function? And there's also xlab and ylab. Can you just talk about those a little bit? Are you familiar right. with that? Uh, the yes, the 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 lab function is the la uh, means label function. Uh, it, it does labeling and you with the, the, that function you um, can uh, it do titles, subtitles, uh, uh, captions uh, and establish the, the titles of the legend all in that function. They comes with arguments of the label function, labs function, which is the um, labs function like this. Uh, inside this, um, uh, this function, you add arguments, which are, um, maybe it's better if I share again, uh, it would be better if I share. Again, you see that if I use lab, labs function, inside you can, you have different arguments. Otherwise, otherwise, there is a gg title function, okay? Um, then there are other, many other options, but for example, if we do see gg title function, it does as well um add the title so you don't put obviously it's unusable that you put labs function and a gd title um so you want to establish a title with some more uh, features like the it, it's a more impacting title um you can you can use a gg title or labs function Either, either way, it's absolutely the same, uh, but it, it, it's, it's unuseful for you to use both, basically. So you can add a GG title to another GG title here, for example, the GG title, and uh, in, instead the, in, uh, instead of uh, um, for, for labs, I do this with the GG title. Uh, with, where is it? With GG title, I do uh, lab inside. I, um, I don't say. Um, title ma I say lab okay so this is lab and the gg title eccolo qua I do lay I, I write label instead of uh, uh, title okay I say label equals to uh, my title 
now I want to take this off this way. Gigi title, my title. And I have my title. Okay, so it um, it might be useful to, to use it in, in, in some condition for which you have more than uh, uh, one geom, more than one plot, uh, and you don't use uh, labs, but you just use ggtidal, because this can be used just like a, a, a function that you uh, add to your plot. So you may uh, do this, like you have uh, uh, your plot, which is this, and you have assigned it to a variable name with an, a specified name, like age, sex, plot, and then you add without a title, and then you add the title, just this way, you add uh, a ggplot title. And you can do this, uh, maybe with a different package, which provides this uh, uh, um, this, this uh, um, structure for making a plot. Then, what, what was the other uh, the other question? Uh, labs, GG title, and um, what was the other question? Uh, just uh, the other thing I said in there was that there's uh, X Lab and Y Lab, which are other. They're like okay. GG title. They're they're other shorthand versions of labs. Right. Yep. Um, basically, inside the the, the lab, uh, as you have seen, I have as I have specified the title of my field. This way, this is the legend. For example, um, I had. The, the color differentiating uh, by sex, you know? So I have given the fill uh, inside, I've, I've written fill inside a lab to give a title to my legend. As well as this, I can add uh, uh, x equals to double quotes and I can specify the title of the x axis as well as y and specify the title of the y axis if i don't do this because it's unusual if you do twice i can specify the titles of my axis with x lab or y lab and i specify the x axis title this way for example as, uh, i need to add a plus and say uh, y lab uh, you can search for the x lab function uh, this way and it appears in the uh, help page yeah they're all documented find... in that same that one same help page because they yes. all ah uh, they all in the match. Yes. Yep. Yeah, they were in the So this way you specify the titles uh, of the axis, basically. Then you have uh, other functions like x slim, um, x slim, and y lim, which establish uh, and uh, this like um, x lim or y lim, and this way you specify the uh, limits uh, of your axis. You specify if you want the zero to 100, uh, it, it depends by your data. Uh, but there are many different ways to do things. So the, the, my uh, experience uh, in um, based on my experience, I would say that you understand the structure of a plot, then uh, set up your data, yeah, it's like scratch down, I uh, stop sharing, uh, like scratch down your visualization. What, 
do you want to see from your data? And then once you have established what you want in the X axis, in the Y axis, if you want scatter plot, um, a bar, an histogram, or whatever you want, uh, then you set up your data in a way that you have your variables ready to put inside your plot. So you have Y, X, and Y uh, variables ready to put inside your plot. Then you have now clear what is the structure of a ggplot. Uh, think about that. Uh, have a look at the exercise and the solutions which I, are provided here uh, in the link in the chat. And uh, that would be fun to do. <laughs> If you have any other questions, let's see. Hey, I have a question. <laughs> so um, I asked earlier um, if the y axis is always the dependent variable. And um, I was wondering if that was true. And if you're kind of new to looking at data, how do you know which is the dependent? OK. Usually, the dependent variable is the, is the variable that depends from another variable. So that value will be depending from the outcomes of an independent variable. So usually, the variable x is the independent variable, and the y, y is the one that you are predicting somehow. Okay, some so senses. like with with the MPG, it's just like, okay, I have this size engine and I think like the smaller engine is going to have better gas mileage. So exactly. the gas mileage depends on the type of car. Exactly. So, okay, but, and that's usually how the plots are set up. Exactly. So okay. the outcome depends by the... Um, which is the y uh, variable depends by the uh, the value of the x var uh, okay thanks that's variable <laughs> that is something that's just a you know best practice it's a convention okay. and so you will definitely see plots that have it the other way because that's just ha how the person happens to make it but in when you're making your own plots it is a good idea to always put the independent variable on the y depending on the x Okay. I say always, unless you have a good reason to switch. Yeah. <laughs> Which and is right. <laughs> oh, otherwise, you can use chord flip. Yeah. So you have established mm. the X and the Y, so the, the, the independent the, the dependent variable. Then you, with the function chord, and we have mentioned it, I don't know if you remember, in the structure, there was the ggplot, the geom, and then the facet and the chord function. The chord flip is one of the chord functions. The chord flip just flip oh, okay. the axis. So you might want to establish something and then you want to see uh, on the other side and you do chord flip okay. at, the end, at the end of your... You need to practice. And then uh, with some Tidy Tuesday, you be fantastic. Okay, <laughs> thanks. Oh, and I guess I can introduce myself too. Um, I'm sorry, do we need to stop? <laughs> no, uh, oh. okay. uh, yeah, go well, ahead. I, I have a question after that. Okay, I just wanted to say I'm Becky, I'm in Portland, Oregon, and I'm a I uh, have a background in mechanical engineering, worked in a library for 20 years, and am switching over to data science. So, hello. <laughs> hello. Welcome. Uh, go ahead and ask your question, Sandra. Okay, so I, I just wanted to clarify because maybe I, I completely misheard this. So, um, the mappings, right, are the coordinates, essentially, right? And then, John, you said that it's, think about it as you're mapping from the data to the visual aesthetic 
property, right? And then I think that Frederica said that the mappings can be positioned within like the main ggplot call or inside one of the geom functions, right? To yep. plot a different data set within, is that right? Uh, you Technically you can use a different data set for a certain line okay. or, but more often what it would be, um, would be, you know, maybe you have, uh, I can't think of a good example, but you know, you have a line that is depending on some certain set of data as the Y, and then maybe another line is a different, um, different column within your data is the Y. And so it's oh. being plotted on the same coordinate system, but, um, you know, different values are, are in different geometries. And that's part of the reason like the the logic behind the grammar of graphics that you're just mm -hmm. adding things you start with the background and add things to that plot as it makes sense um i see yeah. oh okay okay and then i just following up on the xy question right i had always assumed that this is from linear relationships but it's not necessarily true right because normally in a linear relationship, you have y equals mx plus b, right? Slope intercept form. Right. But when you're doing exploratory data analysis, I'm assuming that you're not established a linear relationship every time you're looking for, for something. So right. it's just convention at that point. Okay. Yeah. Great. Yeah, that and, was confusing. But yeah. It, is, it is useful to kind of um, have in mind that whatever you're trying to understand try to put that on your why and if you're consistent about that then i don't know things make more sense basically it's consistent yeah, okay. helps it make it or it helps make it clearer that makes sense and i think with that um we are going to need to wrap up um ryan has uh, volunteered to present next week so we will be going over chapter four uh chapter four in the online version i think it's only just chapter two in the uh print version um, and we will, we'll see what he has to, to show us. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Right. I will see you all next week. Thank you, Federica. Bye. 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 Great job, everyone.